Uh, I'm Lawrence Darvel, I'm a director with SysKD and also the BA Manager Forum. It is a real pleasure for me to introduce Michael Noonan today, who's our keynote for the morning. Michael is Head of Business Design with Capita, which does sound a fantastic job, I have to say. I think there's lots of people in the audience who are um, going to be asking you afterwards about your job and what you do day to day. I'm not going to just read through Michael's conference biography. You can look through that at your leisure. But looking at Michael's background and actually sitting down with him, having a coffee in a back street cafe in, uh, in Sheffield, um, it was a great opportunity to appreciate his unique mix of experience that he brings to the keynote today. So Michael's a background in change delivery. He's then moved into architecture and business design, and he's plied his trade across public and private sector. So his financial services, city councils, and the British Army, I think, as well, which is a fantastic mix of sector experience. He tells me he always works closely with BAs, and I have BAs who tell me that's, uh, that's very true, which is good to hear. And so I think he's got a very unique perspective to bring to a keynote. And it's actually this morning to challenge you, which I think is great to have first thing in the morning. <clears throat> Always good to have a challenge. I won't say too much more, but I have to say a real sincere thank you for speaking today and putting in the prep. Um, these guys don't get paid for doing this. Their day jobs stack up in the background. But Michael's, to a T, has got everything pulled together and uh, delivering a fantastic session this morning. So I'd like to invite you to challenge us, your audience, Michael. Thank you. Uh, that, that's quite humbling, and, and, and thank you very much uh, for the, the kind introduction from Lawrence. And uh, good morning, everybody. Um, and thank you to RM UK for inviting me to come and have the opportunity to have a captive audience for 45 minutes about my chosen subject. Brilliant. I love this. This is great. Okay. There will be some audience participation okay, as we go through the morning. Okay. So don't be shy. You know, I'm not going to ask you to jump around and change seats or anything like that. But you know, let's try and make this as interactive as we possibly can. And when I was asked to come and give this keynote presentation. I, I duly took that evening, I went into my study, I sat down with my glass of red wine, and I opened up PowerPoint. That's what we always do, okay? That's where the creative juices come from. And I, I typed in four words, and I'm not gonna tell you what those four words are yet, but I will do in a moment. And those four words stumped me, okay? They made me really think about who I am where I am in my world and my profession, where I am in terms of society as well. And it took me about two weeks to get round these four words to decide, what am I going to really truly speak about today? What am I going to impart knowledge or question what we do? So hopefully over the next 40 odd minutes, I'll be able to talk you and take you through that journey of, of thought. And it was what Graham said yesterday, which I now know, uh, the keynote yesterday was my incubation period. Okay, so I've now got a new term from this conference that when I get presenter, presenter's block, I know it's now called my incubation period and I, it's okay, it'll be fine. So that's one lesson that I learned from yesterday and something that I'm gonna take forward going, going onwards. Now the presentation is called Beyond the Boundaries. And it's really been set to say, okay, what do we mean by boundaries, okay, in our organizations? And I'll talk through that as well. There's a couple of key, key takeaways. I'm not going to give you all the answers. This is a thought-provoking session. There might be some things that I might say that are controversial. So I don't know if anyone was in the enterprise or the, the business architecture panel yesterday. Uh, had a great panel, great team. I know some of the people in the front row here uh, and uh, we were quite controversial about enterprise architecture. I'm not going to say what it was that we said, but it was very, it's very true. We are trying to be thought-provoking at these conferences. So anyway, um, let me talk you through the four words. Th those four words were, are we still relevant? Okay, are we still relevant? These four words, if you just take them in, Read them to yourself, 
think about it, it opens up so many questions in your own, your own self, okay? And it was those four words in my study that I wrote down. And when I say it took me by surprise that I couldn't answer that question straight away was really important to me. Because it not only challenged me personally and what I'm doing as a business architect and in business design, and is my role still relevant to my organisation and the organisations that I help, important, yes. I've got to make sure I add value, definitely, okay? I've got to make sure I'm doing things for them that's important. But it also made me question, is my company still relevant? Are the products and services that my company offer to us as people still relevant today? Is it going to be relevant tomorrow? Relevant in five years? History shows us a littered number of companies over many years that were market leaders that no longer exist, that no longer are a part of our fabric of society. So what happened? Why are they no longer relevant? But it's also then the next bit that we've got to think about is actually in terms of society. Our society is constantly changing. We are in a society that is changing so fast that it's hard for organisations to keep up. Digital organisations have had a mindset and they have changed the way we are doing business. Okay? And it's those organisations that are really driving this economic change. Now, here comes the, 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 the crowd participation. How many people, and I want hands up, okay, so don't be shy, how many people have shopped at a supermarket? Tesco's, Waitrose, Marks and Spencer's, Aldi, Lidl, any of those? Let me have a show of hands, please. Absolutely brilliant, you're all disruptors, okay? They were the first people that disrupted our, our economy. Okay? You used to have retailers in the high street that sold your fruit and veg, your butchers that sold the meat, okay? your pharmacies. Now, we still have them. Okay? And what I'm saying today is you'll still have these independent retailers. Okay? But that economic shift shifted power. It shifted investment. It shifted how we did our weekly shop. Okay? We don't normally nip down the shop now and go and grab this and grab that for the whole week. We go to a big supermarket, we drive there, okay? We go and do our weekly shop, we bring it back, we put it in the house, okay? They were disruptors of their time. So this new fangled in vogue term of disruption has always been there, okay? Don't lose sight of that, it's a new term, yes. It's one way of us describing what, what's happening. And that economic shift is something that we're seeing at a speed that is untrue today. We are seeing that digital transformation is changing the way we are doing business. And that has an impact on us. So let me introduce you to our networked individual. I, I did give the name for my network individual, but um, someone told me it was a derogatory term in Scotland, so I had to take it off. Uh, so, <laughs> So uh, we, we, I just say, say hi to our network individual. I'm not going to give him a name or her a name. Our networked individual is somebody who is empowered. They empower themselves. They are connected within a network of people and organizations. They decide when they participate. They decide when they are on. It, who's heard the phrase, a bit more audience participation? Who's heard the phrase, I'm going to go dark? Yeah, one or two people. You're going to hear this much more in life, okay? This is when people switch everything off. They go dark. You can't contact them, not by phone, not by email, not by Twitter, not by Facebook. Go dark. I'm going dark. I hear this all the time at the moment. That's the person that we're looking at. These people are much more open about privacy. It's no longer, this is mine. This is my identity. I'm not letting you share that. It's much more open. And that's a real big change. And these people are great at using data for their own needs. 
but actually allowing data to help them protect what they want from an environment. Who's heard the word big data? Yeah, anyone used it? No, right, there you go. Uh, but big data actually really has a purpose, all right? And that purpose is coming much more prevalent now, okay? I go home, I'm, I'm a bit of a geek. I don't know if I've met everybody yet, but I will do it at some stage, but I'm a bit of a geek. I love home automation, so one thing that I spend my hard-earned money on is how can I automate my home even more? Uh, and why is that important? Well, for me, I go home and at 7.30, I like to sit down on a Tuesday night, sit down in my sofa, I wanna watch House of Cards, I wanna follow it up by Liar, and then my wife wants to watch Dr. Foster or something like that. Nothing's live, I don't think anyone watches live TV anymore, okay? But the lights know when to go down and dim because I don't like bright lights um, when I'm watching TV, okay? Um, but my lights have learned that that's what happens. They know that about half nine, I'm gonna go upstairs. Funny enough, my room that I go into has got the climate to the right level. It's got the lighting that I like. My bathroom knows what my lighting is like for when I wanna have a wash and things like that. It's learned how I behave in my home. And that's what data is doing. Using data wisely, and the quality of data from one of the speeches earlier on this week is really important, because that enables us to predict my movements and what I want. So I can put it into holiday mode, and it acts like I live in the house. Okay, great security. But again, we're using that network of my home and my environment and my entertainment to look after me, okay? It's very much about me as an individual tailored to me. So what's the big thing? Why, why is this a thing for companies to take hold of? We sell stuff, that doesn't matter, does it? Well, yes, we do. So I own a water company, I'm gonna sell you a bottle of water. Okay, that's, that's it, if you wanna buy it, fine, that's great. I'm gonna brand it, I'm gonna market it, and things like that, okay? I've got my capabilities, my building blocks of my company, my core business. As the years have gone on, we've sort of stretched out into the, the, the macro environment where we've taken some of those capabilities, and you know what? That organization's much better at doing that. So I'm gonna outsource that, that, that part, and my macro environment will look after that. Some of the things that are happening in terms of governance spaces, et cetera, and the external influences are, ha are happening. Interact and change the way I use my organization. Okay, regulation, that type of thing. And then the third one that we're seeing is the business ecosystem, okay? Business ecosystem is something much wider. This is where we as organizations are not comparing ourselves to traditional peers. Okay, traditional organizations that we compete with. We're actually looking beyond that. We're looking at non-traditional partners. So if you asked uh, Peter Scudamore from uh, the Premier League, okay, traditionally the Premier League would have pitched themselves at the English Football League. If anyone doesn't like football, don't know what football is, these are leagues with teams and they compete. Uh, or in Italy or in Spain, etc. They would have pitched themselves against that. In a great interview, he said, my competitors are not other leagues. My competitor is PlayStation. It's Game Boys, if you remember Game Boys, they're no longer around, but you know what I mean. But I'm trying to get a, a good sense of the organists. All right? Um, it's those things that we are seeing that are the non-traditional uh, in, in interaction competitiveness, competitives with the, that we have. And, and that's really important because that opens up some opportunities. And us as individuals, companies now are having to give us offerings that go across the core business, the macro environment, and also the business ecosystem. It is coming to a point where we're offering an end-to-end -end value stream all the way from start to end, okay? So this changes the what and the how. So if anyone was at our discussion yesterday, uh, the, the, the business architecture panel, I'm gonna keep promoting this, guys, right? I think it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, I loved it. All right, we had a great fun, but we talked about the what and the how. 
So the what being your building blocks of your organisation. Okay, what do you do? Okay, and the how is, well, how you do it. Okay, the, the process flow. So again, let's have our hands up. How many people are outside in, customer centric in their organisations? Anybody? We've got, we've got a smattering of one or two, a few. Okay, great. Um, have you thought about when you're doing that customer centric view? My networked individual getting up in the morning. No, you wouldn't have done. Because what you would have done is your outside in view would have been from the moment that person is coming into interest in my core business or my macro environment when they're coming in. That's the moment that you start your customer centric view, your customer journey mapping, your personas and things like that. That is the point that you start. In an ecosystem, the moment you start is when that moment switches on. It is when that moment, that networked individual says, I'm no longer dark, I'm active. I've got to get them, I've got to get them, I've got to get them. I'm active. That's the moment that we've got to start working towards. And when you start looking at that end-to-end -end ecosystem, there is opportunities a must. There is loads of them. Okay, who's heard of Uber? Yeah, you won't get one in London anymore. Uh, <laughs> but Uber, <laughs> but Uber is really key, okay? So if you look at the Uber vision statement, it doesn't mean about, you know, I can get a taxi just by clicking a button on a, a mobile phone. I, I've got it written down somewhere, but I'm not gonna look for it. But it's something along the lines of looking at all the possibilities for riders, drivers, and cities. Uber. Hmm. How many taxis do they own? None. They are a platform play, okay? They use things like Google Maps to, to, to locate their drivers. They use other tools to be able to put them together, stitch them together, and give you an end-to-end -end experience. You don't have to pay the driver. That's taken care of, okay? So it makes our lives very simple, very easy. So what happens today? So, if I've got a product today, and you come along as my individual, I'll go, right, I want to buy that bracelet, okay? So I go up to the counter, I say, I want that one. And uh, you go, yep, yeah, here's the money, and I take it away. So delivery, although it's a truck, it might be that you bought it on something like Amazon or any other the marketplaces are available, okay? But the seller is always in control, okay? As soon as you decide you want that product, you lose the power because you don't decide anything else from that moment in time. You want one click. Okay, that's fine. That's customer experience when you're inside the process. It's making it easier for me to do. Okay, but you lose the ability to go any further. When you're looking at delivery, you might get options. Can I have express delivery? Could I have a standard delivery? Or could I have it sometime in the future? I don't know when, I don't know how, but it's free. Okay. Um, but you don't decide what delivery organization you're going to use. I like UPS. They give me a tracking number. I can see where it is, etc. But I don't get that, okay, in a traditional sense. It's controlled by the seller. They might have a deal that's good for them with the Royal Mail. That gives, it's, you know, it doesn't give me any information as a consumer. Is that good for me? No. Is it good for the organization? Absolutely. It's great for the organization. Okay. Because in that process, we have leaned organizations to the inch of their life, okay? We have leaned that process. It is as streamlined as it can possibly be, okay? It's got outside in, it's got custom map, it knows my moments of truth, but it hasn't treated me as a customer, it hasn't treated me as an individual. So I want to introduce you to something called the Connective Disruptive Model, okay? It's a tongue twister, all right? But what that's introducing, this term disruption, we're hearing all the time. If you look at the financial industry 10 years ago, you'd have had six or seven different major players. When I was working with an organization that is a credit card payment organization, um, 
We did a study and there was over 1,000 players in the financial industry space that became our competitors. Okay? That is the proliferation that has happened over the last five to ten years. But with all those disconnected organizations, there is an opportunity for companies now to start leveraging how to use competitors going forward. They all have something unique. They have all broken down that value chain to offer us something unique that is something that is valuable to all of us. We use apps every day on our telephones. Ten years ago, apps didn't exist, okay? But how do we use those bursts of energy to connect ourselves in an ecosystem? In the middle, there's something called platform. Platform is about connecting all the possible customers that we've got to all the possible providers that could actually offer that service. Connecting them and being able to create something special and unique. There will be probably about 12 types of ecosystems where this happens. My individual will look at going, I want this type of experience. He will talk to his peers and his colleagues and his friends, people networking downstairs, having a coffee about it, getting information all the time from a, a, not a company, looking at different reviews on things. All that data is starting to drive the way we think and feel about things. And our delivery. Why is it that I can't use UPS? I've got a loyalty scheme with them. I've got a loyalty card. I get points. Why can't I use them for every single purchase that I use and have? Of course I can. We have got to change that mindset that the seller is in control. And we will do. And the economic shift that we are seeing is to this digital transformation. And if anyone thinks that digital transformation is about IT, please, please look up a new definition of what digital means. Okay? It's not about IT. Okay? It's about societal changes, about being this networked individual, this networked organization, this ecosystem play that we are seeing. So just think about it. That is the space that we're playing in. It's blank. There is people out there that are using that blank space and those opportunities that it provides. We spoke about at the start, are we still relevant? If we ignore this shift, this economic shift, Organisations that we thought were untouchable will be lost forever. You see people like Amazon and Apple and Google talk about Home, Echo, and the, the Apple version, which nobody really knows of, but will take over the world in about three weeks' time when it gets relaunched. Okay? Because uh, that's what Apple do. Brilliant, fast followers. They are the best at it. Okay? They are playing in that space because they want to connect to us. They want to create that ecosystem from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep and when you are asleep. I have an iWatch, I'm very lucky, uh, but that monitors my heartbeat. It monitors my health. In a few years' time, that's going to be linked up to my doctor so that my doctor can see that I'm having heart palpitations as I'm up on stage talking to you lot. He, he, he might ring me up and go, ah, Michael, come in, come in. You know, it, it's, it, you know you, you, you're going to be poorly. But it's again about being connected. It's about using that data in a way that is opportunity bound. Insurance companies could use the data on my arm to say, Michael, your life insurance, your heartbeat is so good, it's so calm, it's so collective, you're going to live until you're about 170. Um, if that's the case, God help us. Um, and, and I think that's really important because that changes the opportunities that we've got as organizations and people. Is, is that important? So imagine and rethink. The challenge for you today is when you walk away from here is to challenge and rethink. I, 
I was talking about a blank piece of paper to one of my colleagues, Ian, down there earlier on, uh, yesterday, I think it was, and I was saying that some people get nervous when they see a blank piece of paper with no boundaries, okay? Especially if you are used to having something constricted and you know what you're working in and that feels good. You've got to break that, okay? So at times, when you're having a cup of coffee or you're having a water cooler chat, just get a blank piece of paper out and just look at it and go, I need to rethink revision. And I think Graham said something else. So I learned lots yesterday from Graham's presentation. Uh, reflection, okay? So make sure you reflect. So when we're looking at this, we've got to think about why is it important to us? So I've talked a lot, okay? I've talked a lot about this networked individual, this ecosystem. It's all hairy fairy stuff. It's all about disruption. Who do, what do I care? Okay. We care because I think one of the presentations yesterday talked about an enterprise BA. It talked about uh, different levels of BA. And bringing it back to this conference, us as business architects are now not working in the bounds of our organizations. We are working beyond those boundaries. That's why the title of the slide of this presentation, we are working in that space. I need and I want the business analysis community to come with us because mapping and understanding that value stream and ecosystem level is not only complex, it's not only difficult, it actually will cut across organizational boundaries. It will also cut across individual boundaries. So how do you even contemplate mapping something like that? And what I'm proposing is that you create something called a global value stream or a global value chain that, that goes on. Actually using the tools that we currently have, like the business model canvas, like capabilities, but actually they would sit underneath that global value chain, okay? And that value through end to end. So when we look at that process, and I think um, if the, the, the ladies from Sheffield Hallam University, a great presentation yesterday, if you get a chance to talk to them, I'd recommend you go and talk to them. Talked about using CIPOCs and things like that. You've got to elevate that up. Elevate that up until beyond your organization and see what opportunities are there. See what the value between those two steps are and how can you connect them together because that connection together comes really important. I'll give you an example of where this is happening at this current time. Um, I'm, I'm working for a local council, um, and we're looking at kenneling. Okay? It's not a sexy subject. Okay? It's not something that you would see as cutting edge. It's right out there. But it is. Because what we're seeing with this economic shift, this shift in people's perceptions, is that when they find a stray dog, they no longer pick up the telephone, dial some numbers, go, hello, council, I've got a stray dog, uh, can you come and collect it? What, what do they do? The value that they do is they pick up their, their phone or a device or something, go on Facebook, I've found Fluffy the Alsatian. I've got him at home, anyone know who Fluffy belongs to? Or there's a phone number on his dog tag, you pick it up, you phone him, okay? And then somebody from your network shares it, it gets shared again, it goes viral, and Joan down the road goes, oh yeah, Fluffy's my Alsatian, I'll come and collect it. The council haven't got involved. So this council has got a nice, beautiful dog kennels, sitting there, unused, collecting cobwebs, staff in there, um, being wasted. So me being a good business architect goes, whoa, hey, that's great. Whew, get rid of all that. Brilliant, I've saved money. I've, I've, I've done all the good things. I've leaned the process. It's all great. Wrong, okay? Because we still need some of that capability. The capability stays, but how we do it changes. So this is really important, this flow through. Because if I put the councillors in the, the platform play and I connect all the people that have got stray dogs to all the people that have lost their dogs, but I make it a bit wider and go, actually, all the unwanted dogs around this area versus all the, um, the people that want dogs, I can make some connections there. But the boundary isn't now my council. My boundary is 
actually there is no boundary because I've made it into a platform play. I've made this now the Uber of dog kenneling, okay? I can then put this down into Southampton. I can put this into Scotland. I could put this into France. I could put this into Australia. This local council now has a business opportunity. And that is the opportunity of just taking a step back, reimagining and rethinking that offering. If you look at the traditional value chain, uh, the flow of I purchase a product and I go through and I go through, that would never be possible. I would never have thought of that. And this is why this topic is so now. It's not in two weeks time, it's not in three weeks time, it's now. And now we're late. So why is it truly, truly different? I've given you that example about dog kenneling, okay? You can imagine for all your individual organisations where that could happen. By making those sort of connections, those leaps of faith, use us business architects and business analysts to help document it. Look for those opportunities. See those opportunities. Make the complex simple, okay? And that's really key. But when we do that, our organisation structures, our boundaries of our organisation change, and they change forever. I was reading a, an article last night when I was meant to be prepping for this session. Not very good, but it's actually quite useful. Because what they were saying is that the workforce is changing. We've got workforce, I think it was three or four or five, I don't know what it was. But what it marked for me was actually this economic shift is actually changing the way we're doing business as well and how we are setting up our organisations, the way we're doing training, the skill sets that we need for organisations. So I'm going to ask another little bit of audience participation. Don't be shy, okay? How many people have modelled a process for robots? One, two, three, four, about five in a room of 400. In three years' time, okay, I will ask that question again if I get invited back. I don't know if I will, but right? And I'll guarantee a majority of people would have modelled a process for a robot, okay? The start and end of that process. The other thing that we will notice in the organisations and, um, and us as BAs, we'll have something called robotics configurators, okay? These super men and women that will come along and configure our robots for us. It's not a job that's there now, might be in some organisations, but it will be a job in the future. As we move more and more into this uh, robotics, you know, chat box, et cetera, but more again into the AI space as well, when they start learning about how to predict what we're doing. So when I pick up the phone to O2 and companies like that, I get a robot first and I chat to my robot and I go, uh, hey, are you having a good day? Yeah, I'm having a good day. I can have a conversation with them. That will become much more prevalent. You can see it with IBM Watson and things like that about health and that how that's being deployed in health. That is changing the way we're in medicine, how we make diagnoses, really important. The other thing is um, when we, and I, I'm trying to read my slide here to make sure I can get, see the thing. Um, that change in workforce will be significant. Because where we have people picking up telephones today, where we have people doing data entry, and I think most organisations still have data entry clerks, even if they may be called something much better, like admin people or something like that, we still have them, where we do paperwork and we go back to the office and we fill it into the systems. We still have that, okay? That work will be done by automation doesn't change our business capabilities because they're business capabilities. It changes how we do it and we'll automate it. But it will change the workforce because that layer of workforce now is looking at a bleak future. Okay? It, it needs to change and it needs to adapt. It's our responsibility that we are looking at that organisational change and going, how do we upskill staff now to take on work that is going to be there in the future? Okay? And that is a really, really important thing because this movement 
isn't going away. It's getting faster and faster and faster. So, a couple of takeaways, and I've got a couple of more things as well that I want to say. The first takeaway for me, when I sat down in my study, a glass of red wine, um, are we still relevant? Think about that. Really, really think about that. Take that back to your organisations and sit down and ask your teams that question and see what future is there. See what you can do to move your organization forward to something that is not even thought about today. Disruption is just a new term. It's just a vogue. Don't be frightened by the term. We demonstrated that everyone shops at supermarkets. They were disruptors. They changed the economic shift. That economic shift whether it's version one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is, new industry revolution, it's changing. We're changing. We're being much more connected. And I don't mean mobile phones connected. I mean connected in terms of all the different endpoints that we've got and all the pieces. Last show of hands, how many people um, own music? Actually physically own a CD and bought a CD in the last five months or vinyl last five months not many i can't remember the last time that i bought music okay i can't remember the last time i bought a dvd i can't remember the last time i actually really what actually i did i watched live tv this morning because i was interested in the news but um i can't remember those things okay they are disrupting the way we we, we work and play okay and that's going to happen. When we look at cars, okay, so I saw a really cool thing um, the last couple of weeks. Uh, I was on Google Maps. I jumped into to my brother's new posh car. My brother loves these cars. I like home automation. My brother likes cars. He's got a new Jaguar. All right? and, and what he did, he said, oh, Michael, just pair your phone up. The phone paired automatically. My Google Maps moved from my phone onto his car without me touching a button, okay? It did it automatically. The network was already there. They've already started thinking about the future of that cabin space that we're going to get into. I call it a cabin space because in a number of years, we'll no longer drive, okay? We will just plug in where we want to go and we'll go, all right? That's where it's going, okay? Ford Motor Company, used to talk about selling cars, selling trucks. Their latest vision statement is about mobility. It's a complete different change where they're taking their business. So that question, number one, are we still relevant? Ford have already started making that move away from selling cars and trucks to more mobility. The second takeaway that I want you to have today is understanding that this connected disruptive model is very complex, okay? It's not easy. It's not easy to get your head around, start with, okay? It took me a couple of weeks to get my head around it when I was thinking about this. But it is where we are going. 300 CEOs were surveyed about four weeks, five weeks ago, and results are just starting to come through. Out of those results that we've got so far, the majority of people are now saying that they are pairing themselves against non-traditional competitors. They are looking at what are those competitors doing and how do I leverage what those people in other markets are doing for my own gain. They are talking about ecosystems. This word, this end-to-end -end value stream that we're talking about, ecosystems is going to be something that you are going to work in more and more and more, okay? The key thing there is that when we are looking at those ecosystems, we've got to reimagine and rethink those product offerings. We've got to really think through how they are connected and how they're going to go forward. And finally, 
as we reimagine our business models, and using business model canvas is a great thing to look at that unified value proposition, looking at those customers and how we tie those customers together, looking at what our capabilities are and the cost structures of doing that. The digital transformation is breaking down barriers. The cost of transactions that we're seeing is reducing and reducing and reducing. That's important because that enables us when the cost of transaction goes down to actually transact in ways that we never thought of before because the cost is no longer there. Those boundaries that we had before were based around the cost of transaction. I need to boundaryfy my organization. I'm doing it. I'm marking those boundaries because I can't do everything. And we're not saying that you're going to do everything in the future, but actually those boundaries in certain parts get much lower. Entry into market, entry into connection between these organizations becomes much lower. We've got to model that. And when we model that, we will see the skill sets of our organizations, the boundaries of our organization diminishing. They will be different. They'll be more transient. Okay? They'll be working on an upper level. So where we've talked about enterprises and enterprise architects, it's no longer there. It's now beyond that. Business architecture, business design is looking way past those boundaries. It's looking at when that person wakes up in the morning to when they go to sleep, that is the value chain. That is what we're trying to influence. That is where us as organizations, if we can control it, understand it and model that complexity, we will be able to make a difference. We will still be relevant. So that concludes my keynote presentation. I hope you are sufficiently thought-provoked. Um, and uh, hopefully that you, you've enjoyed it. Um, I will take questions for, I think I've got about five minutes left, if I'm looking about right. Yep, I've got questions for about five minutes, so please feel free. Yep, just go out the front here. Microphone's coming. Hi, yes. Um, I just wanted to see if um, the way that you developed your thinking on this, you know, what tools or what kind of um, inspiration, what kind of information did you use uh, from either previous jobs or other people, or how did you get to, the, to, to this thought process that you're explaining to us today? Okay. Uh, so, um, I, did everyone hear the question? I hope you did. It's about how did I get to this thought process of a business ecosystem? Well. It's been a long, long journey, I think, is the, the start of that. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's really looking around, you know, when I look at a business, I look at it as in combined. I've used my capability models to describe my business. I've, I've leaned my business. Society is changing, and I, I'm looking at things like Uber and these disruptive models. And I'm looking at what their characteristics are. And those characteristics are challenging what I traditionally do. Okay, so when I look at my capability model, yes, it describes my business, but it doesn't allow me as an organization in a way to grow. Okay, unless I put a new product out there, then I spend all that time to put products out there. Actually, is that where we want to be? And that's really the question I started to look at uh, when we were looking at this space. And I, and I sat down at home and I was like, well, when I look at things like... Um, the Amazon Echo, and I look at the, the Google version, Google Home, I think it's called. Um, you can see which one I own. Uh, it, it's actually looking at that and going, why are they spending so much time putting stuff in the house? Why are we spending so much time on the, the, the network of the, the internet of things? It used to be the big thing, big term. Why are we looking at things like big data? And it's actually as a business architect, as you start to piece these pieces together like you do in your own organization, you actually see that there is a bigger thing at, uh, at play at this moment in time. And we are seeing that I'm ebbing more and more out of my organization because I'm seeing opportunities. Well, if I can just do this little bit, I understand it. I can really add much more value to my organization. Customer experience. Customer experience is invaluable. Okay, and journey mappings and things like that. But it always used to concern me that we'd say, well, I'm outside in. I've nailed it. When actually, 
I've only started talking about the process from the moment that I'm interested, not the thought process before that. And I'll give you an example of that. An organization I worked with wanted to do a joint venture with this another organization about, about offering an app. And we spoke about when somebody in that value stream would use that app. And we, they were like, yeah, they'll come in, they'll click a button, and they'll do this, this, and this, and this. And everyone was really, really excited. This multi-million pound deal, this big um, coming together of two organizations until I put a little spanner in the works. And I went, actually, to get to that point that you're talking about, we start over here. Okay, and that long lead time in is months before they'd actually even open the app and they'd use the app for 30 seconds and they're gone. That burst of energy is no good to us as an organization. Don't waste 20 million pounds. I'm really glad they didn't waste 20 million pounds uh, because it, it was a net white elephant. Okay, and that's how I got to long answer, but that's how I got to where we are today is actually looking at that wider value and, and, and reimagining, rethinking. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I've got one at the back there, and then one over the other side there. There's a lady over that side as well for, for afterwards. Can you wave your hand in here, lady? There you go. Super. Okay, sir. Question is, uh, you know, is this, like, the, this model, like, uh, it has to go to leadership who is defining the vision or a strategy? Because once you have a vision defined, that means your boundary is already defined, and the people you know, trying to meet those vision or a strategic uh, ideas. Sorry, I, I couldn't really hear you very well. Can you say that again? Sorry. Can you just... Yeah, I was trying to say that, you know, um, def you know going beyond the boundaries, it is, seems to me is quite focused to leadership because once you leaders define the vision of the organization, um, like Swandri already said. Okay. So how, how we, uh, as an individual, like, you know. Uh... Okay, so I, I think the question, if I'm wrong, and, and it's apologies because I can't hear very well. Um, I think the question was around the, the how, how's an organization going to allow me to go beyond the boundaries? And, and, and really, do, then do we put boundaries over here? Well, actually, our organization that we work for might be that bit in the middle of the value chain, okay? But, and that's where we want to stay. That is a decision that we make as an organization. That is our strategy, okay? But the challenge comes when we go to our organizations and we don't just go, yeah, that's great. I know where I sit. I'm happy. We go, actually, reimagine and rethinking. Use that dog kindling one for an example, right? If I reimagine and rethink that, my boundaries are now changed completely. That commercial offering, that, that thought process of how you generate value for your organization, actually what that organization now has bit my hand off and said, yeah, we want to do that. That's really important. And that's moving them across the boundaries. Now, understanding that ecosystem play, we might be just someone in the middle of it, but we know the bit that we want to pull from and we know what the bit that we've got to give out to because that's the power, okay? So we actually, as an organization, want to control those inputs and outputs, okay? And that will break down some of those pieces for you, okay? By understanding where you sit within that global ecosystem will really help, okay? And it'll be convincing to your CEOs when you talk to them about it as well. <laughs> okay, uh, the lady over the side there. I wondered, given your connected disruptive model, how concerned you were about things like privacy or even cyber attack and cyber warfare? Okay, so in, in, uh, two different things. Right, I'll tackle them differently. Uh, so how am I concerned about privacy? I'm not. Okay, ah, oh, big taking breath, ah, oh, shocking. I, I'm not, because as a connect, this is why I introduce you to the individual first, the, the networked individual. They don't really care about privacy in the way that we used to, okay? They are happy and they understand that some of our information is going to be used in a way to predict and help us going forward. Who's ever read the terms and conditions of things like your iTunes or anything like that? 
Who's ever gone through it? So there's a few people in there. That's great, see? Not all of us do that, but most of them will say that we would like to use your privacy in ways and means that we want to, okay? I'm paraphrasing. It's a lot longer than that, okay? But what that enables them to do and what companies are able to them to do is actually use that data then to, to manipulate it. Big data, right? Everyone's collecting this big data lake, but no one knows what to do it because that company over there is doing it, so I need to do it. But oh, I've got so much data now. The privacy element of that is actually being able to connect that dots together, okay, to then give an experience back to you as a user. So I take my home automation one. I have signed up to allow my movements, my data, my heap um, persona in my house know where I am, okay? So it can make sure the rooms are warm, it can make sure the lighting is the way it is, okay? Um, I, I'm, the, the second point about, and I'm going to be very quick because I've been told I'm running over. Uh, the second point about cyber attacks, that is a concern for every single organization, okay? It will only come more. Um, but we, if we stop doing the things that we need to do because of a, a threat to our organization, there won't be many organizations left, okay? Yes, we have to invest in that space. Yes, we have to look after our, our assets, okay? Uh, and that's really important. But those assets are changing. So for me, if I was an organization, or for me personally, if I had a cyber attack, how far would they get to my home? Because my home being as much automated as possible, how far would they get? Not very far, because they don't own much. I make sure that everything is ring fenced and it's, they get in one way, it gets locked out everywhere else. And that's what organizations should be doing as, as a, um, a cyber attack going forward. They should be building resilience in that, that space. I know previous organizations, the biggest bill that they got through the door was security. Okay? Uh, rather than looking after the crown jewels, they would go and pay much more for security. Problem with that is they didn't have any strategy around what that security offering is. Again, they are challenges to anything that we're doing. But Okay? Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time. Go and enjoy the rest of the conference, and I'll see you soon.